While the movies do a magical job of bringing the world of Harry Potter to life, due to a limited runtime, there's still a lot of great content from the books that had to hit the cutting room floor. And every book reader has at least one thing they're annoyed about because it wasn't in the movies. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the biggest differences between the books and the movies, and how some notable omissions caused a multitude of head-scratching and disappointment. Let's go! Now let's start off with some of the characters' appearances, such as the main trio, as, well, for the most part, they are accurate to the books, there are some noticeable differences. First off is Harry Potter himself, and while Daniel Radcliffe did basically look like how we imagined the character to be with his jet black hair and lightning bolt scar, there was one major difference to how he looked in the books. His eyes. Famously, the boy who lived looks like his father James except for his eyes, which look like his mother Lily's, whose eyes were green. And the character in the movies was also supposed to have green eyes, but Daniel Radcliffe was apparently allergic to the contact lenses that would make them green. So instead, they had to stick with the actor's natural eye color of blue. Emma Watson also looks different to how Hermione is described in the books, with Rowling describing her as having bushy hair and big front teeth, which, while she has kinda curly hair, it's not exactly bushy and she also has regular-sized teeth. Ron is also different from his book appearance, where he is described as being lanky with a long nose and blue eyes, which is different to Rupert Grint's features, but hey, at least he has the ginger hair. The other differences quickly worth mentioning are Neville was blonde in the books, Voldemort had red eyes, and Umbridge was supposed to resemble a toad. Quidditch is a big part of the wizarding world, and the sport does show up multiple times throughout the movies, except for the actual Quidditch World Cup match, which was cut, and is something I'm still bitter about to this day. But another Quidditch trophy that was left out of the movies was actually the Interhouse Quidditch Cup that Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff participated in at Hogwarts. And it's a trophy that Harry actually won three times in his Hogwarts tenure, although he's not shown winning it once in the movies. Now, there are many fun and interesting classes in the world of Harry Potter that put the likes of mathematics and chemistry in the real world to shame. And even the ones that Harry and co. find boring are exciting to us, such as the history of magic, which was taught by Professor Binns, who is actually a ghost and a notable omission from the movies. While there are a bunch of different classes in the books, you wouldn't think they ever had them, given how little we actually see the students attend them in the movies. Of course, this is understandable, as the movies did have to streamline the story to fit more important content in the runtime, but it would have been nice to see some more of classes such as charms, transfiguration, and care of magical creatures. Now, another part of the schooling system that was somewhat cut down in the movies is the awarding and deduction of house points, except for when Harry and his friends are given like a thousand of them at the end of almost every movie. House points are seen throughout the books and often help accentuate student-teacher relationships, but were relatively inconsequential in the movies. As changes go, this is a relatively minor one, to be quite honest. Now, Goblet of Fire is probably my favorite book in the entire series, but the movie is actually probably one of my least favorites, and that is partly down to the amount of things the movie cut from the book. But Dumbledore's weird shouting of, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? And the awkward haircuts almost every character sports in the movie doesn't help. Now, while my main grievance with the movie is the omission of the World Cup final game, which I mentioned earlier, another is the fact that they basically cut out all of the house elf storyline in the book, such as Winky, who served the Crouch family, and the fact that Dobby and Winky worked in the Hogwarts kitchens, and that Winky basically became an alcoholic, but I don't have any qualms about that being cut. After Hermione learns that it's the house elves that make the school meals, she becomes enraged about their living conditions and tries to make the wizarding world aware of the miserable life and poor treatment the elves are subjected to. So she created the Society for Promotion of Elfish Welfare, also known as Spew, but this was also cut from the movie. Now, we mentioned a few already, such as Winky and Binns, but there are actually a boatload of characters from the books that were left out of the movies. Unless you count Winky's blink and you miss a cameo in Goblet of Fire. Other characters left out of the movies were Ron's older brother, Charlie Weasley, Colin Creevy's brother, Dennis, Cho's friend, Marietta Edgecombe, who was actually the one to tell Umbridge about Dumbledore's army, Ron's owl, Pigwidgeon, which was gifted to him by Sirius, Nymphadora Tonks' parents, Andromeda and Ted, the head of the Department of Magical Games and Sports, Ludo Bagman, and of course, one of the most popular characters in the books, Peeves the Poltergeist, who spends his days at Hogwarts causing complete and utter mayhem. 
Legendary comedic British actor Rick Mail was actually cast as Peeves for Harry Potter and the Sorcerers slash Philosopher's Stone, but the scenes ended up being cut without the actor's knowledge. Now, while they do kind of make an appearance in the movies in a picture, Neville Longbottom's parents, Alice and Frank, are mostly omitted from the movies and their tragic backstory is pretty much glossed over. Neville's parents were captured during the First Wizarding War and were tortured by Death Eaters Barty Crouch Jr. and Bellatrix, Rodolphus, and Rabistan Lestrange using the Cruciatus Curse, which left them permanently traumatized and with severe mental health issues. Harry and co. accidentally come across Neville's parents as he visits them with his grandmother at St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Injuries, but this was cut out of the movies, and in so doing, they left out a lot of Neville's motivations throughout the series. Both movie watchers and book readers will know that Percy Weasley is a bit of a goody two-shoes with a firm stick up his ass, and he likes to follow the rules, comply with authority, accumulate status, and have a healthy career within the Ministry of Magic. This leaves him being a bit of a black sheep amongst his family, and is often coming into conflict with his brothers Fred and George. But this all comes to a head in Order of the Phoenix, when Minister of Magic Cornelius Fudge downright refuses to believe that Voldemort has returned and accuses Harry of lying. Unlike the rest of his family, Percy sides with Fudge and remains loyal to his boss, and even suggests that the Weasleys break their ties with Harry something which causes a rift between them, and he becomes estranged from his family. However, he has an emotional reunion with his family in the Deathly Hallows when he comes to his senses and sides with them once again, all of which is basically left out of the movies. Another thing the movies omit are references to the specifics of House Gaunt, the maternal side of Voldemort's extended family. However, in the books, the movies dive very deep into the Gaunt family, and in particular, Voldy's mother, Merope. Merope endures a violent life at home, tormented by her father, Marvolo, as well as her brother, Morphin, for practically no reason, and it's actually her decision to enchant the muggle named Tom Riddle, Voldy's old man, using a love potion, which is directly responsible for her son's inability to experience love, which is, of course, the most powerful entity of them all. Except for family, of course. Isn't that right, Dom? As you know, in the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry, Hermione, and Ron have to undergo a series of challenges in order to get the stone itself, including Fluffy the Three-Headed Dog and the Giant Chess Game. However, there were two challenges that they faced in the books that were cut from the movies, which were Professor Quirrell's Second Troll and Professor Snape's Potion Riddle Challenge. Going back to the cuts made in Goblet of Fire, I told you there were a bunch, Rita Skeeter is never revealed as an Animagus in the movie. In the movies, Skeeter acts as an annoying thorn in Harry's side, but they never explain how she keeps getting her crazy and usually factually incorrect news. However, in the book, Hermione figures out that Rita is an unregistered Animagus who can transform into a beetle, and she uses this information to blackmail the journalist into staying quiet for a whole year so she can't keep making up lies about Harry. Of course, one of the saddest moments in the series is when Dumbledore is killed by Snape Please. and then subsequently plummets to the ground from the top of the Astronomy Tower, which happens in both the book and the movie. But in the movie, that's basically it, and they just kind of shoot off some lights into the sky to pay tribute to their fallen leader. In the books, though, Dumbledore gets a much grander send-off, with a funeral that consisted of a proper ceremony with hundreds of attendees, as well as performances from Fox the Phoenix and the Mer people. Now, on the subject of sad character deaths, Sirius' death in Order of the Phoenix is another crushing blow to Harry and his fans, as he loses yet another paternal figure. But one thing the movie basically ignores is the will Sirius leaves to his godson, which includes his family home at 12 Grimald Place as well as the family's house elf, Creature. Hence why Harry takes refuge there in Deathly Hallows and why Creature follows his orders despite being generally antagonistic to Harry earlier on in the series. Also, did anyone else just realize that Grimald Place is just a pun name for Grim Old Place, or is it just me? And still on character deaths, and back on the subject of tributes to them, another thing that was noticeably missing in the movies was the Shrine to the Potters in Godric's Hollow. 
As Harry makes his return to his old neighborhood with Hermione in the book, they both find a statue that only wizards can see honoring Lily, James, and Harry, which is accompanied with messages from other witches and wizards supporting Harry's fight against the Dark Lord. This is an emotional scene in the books, and it helps Harry see that he's not alone in the fight against Voldemort, but for some reason or other, it was cut from the movie. Now, one thing that basically gets left out of the Prisoner of Azkaban movie is Crookshanks and the clues he leaves that neither Scabbers the Rat nor the Black Stray Dog are quite what they seem, and that they are secretly both an animagus. Crookshanks knew that Scabbers was really Peter Pettigrew in disguise, and that Sirius Black was actually the dog, and was even helping Sirius sneak into Hogwarts so he could track down and kill Peter. However, this is all basically cut from the movies, with only a few scenes showcasing Crookshanks chasing after Scabbers, meaning the cat never got the attention he deserved. And finally, the Sorting Hat sings a different song each school year during the sorting ceremony in the books, but this was left out of the movies. While the songs are usually just explaining the different houses, in the Order of the Phoenix, the Hat's song is filled with ominous subtext in regards to the return of Voldemort. 